Hey folks, today we're going to break some bottles. Uh, we're going to do the breaking and the simulation over in Houdini and then we're going to bring it over into Unity. So that's the setup that we'll get done today. We're going to try and keep the bottle fairly simple so it should be lightweight for your games. Let's go take a look. So to start out you're going to need a model of a bottle. Then we're going to need some cutter geometry which is going to look something like this. Uh, for the sake of speed, I'm not going to go over how I modelled the bottle in Houdini. For most people, they will probably model it in something else. In which case, you'll be putting down a file node on this side of the tree here. And you will be pointing your file node to wherever you have saved out your OBJ or your FBX of your bottle. And you'll be bringing it in here. And you will be hooking up your file node of your bottle into this side of the boolean. Now the last thing I need to do just to make sure that this bottle is going to work out for when I simulate it shattering is I need to check the size. So the size is important when we do dynamic simulations and it will uh, determine a lot of the values that we have to use later on. So in this case the way to check the size is to probably go and test it against a humanoid figure and one ships with Houdini is called Tommy. So we can just throw Tommy down here and we can do a quick merge. We can plug in the match size on one side and Tommy on the other and we can see that roughly speaking the bottle is about half the size of, of Tommy which is much too big so I need to shrink it down a little bit and I'm using a transform here just to shrink it down by half the size and now you can see that roughly speaking yeah that's the bottle size so at this size it will work much better for my dynamic simulation now over on the other side really all I've done is I've made a grid, I have passed a mountain through it, I'm just copying it, so uh, this is just a copy and transform, so I'm copying it three times here, I'm translating it, each copy is moving up 0.1 unit and it's being rotated around and you end up with this mess. And this mess here is our cutter geometry for our boolean. Now I can go and add other things, but I actually found that the grids were giving me just what I needed. Um, so I have a transform here just to shrink it down so that it matches the bottle size. I can turn on the template here for the bottle coming in on this side, just so I can see one against the other. And yeah, that's just about the right size that I want. And I moved it up because I want to have a base for the bottle um, that is going to be the largest piece. I want to have that left over. So this is very art directable. I can move all of these pieces individually if I want. And this geometry is cutting clean through the bottle. We're going to take the two of those things and we're going to boolean one against the other. The reason that we're going to use the boolean is we want to get lots of different types of shapes. So for glass we want to get long thin shards, wide shards and just odd shaped pieces. And that's the reason we're going to use a boolean as opposed to something like a Voronoi fracture. So Voronoi fracture is very good for doing things like concrete. But when we want to get these different kinds of shapes and really shapes that we want to art direct the boolean sop will help us out quite a lot here. So before I go too far with working out the boolean sop, I'm going to hook the boolean up into this explode view. And this will allow me to see the parts separate out. So, at the mo so I'm going to hook that up and I'm going to put the display flag here. I'm going to select my boolean. Now at the moment it's set to union. So by default it's just joining the kind of cutter geometry into my bottle, which isn't what I want. So I'm going to set this to shatter. Okay, and that's going to cut one piece. Uh, it's going to cut the bottle up with the cutter geometry. Uh, so that's starting to work out okay for me. Now I don't want to have an inside to the bottle. Okay, I want the glass to be quite thin. So I need to change the set A, which is my bottle coming in on this side, from solid over to surface. Okay, and that gives me a very thin surface. And that is starting to look much more like my glass. Now I could add a certain thickness to this, but um, I want to keep this as lightweight as possible for when I get it over into game engine. Now my explode view is working out quite well for me and I can start to see how the bottle is breaking up. If I need to, I can come back up here to get different shapes and I can start playing around with my element size, for example, or my overall height. I can go and move the individual uh, grids as well if I want. So I can be very precise in terms of the kind of cuts that I'm going to get. So this is my basic bottle cut up into pieces. So what we need to look at next is taking this bottle which has been cut up 
and we can go and put it into a dynamic simulation. To put it into a dynamic simulation, I'm just going to use one of the shelf tools. So I have my shelf hidden away here. I'm just going to open it up and I'm going to go over to rigid body. And the one that I'm looking for is RBD fractured object. So I'm going to click on this one. It's going to ask me what kind of fractured object I want to have. I want an RBD packed object. It's going to ask me to pick something. I'm going to click on my bottle. It's brought me back up to the object level to do this. And I'm just going to hit enter and it is going to go and create some nodes for me. So it has gone and created an auto dop network and the auto dop network dops is dynamic operators. And this is where the simulation operators live. So I'm just going to dive in here just to quickly show you what it has created. It has put down an RBD packed object, which is going to be pointed towards the model. And then it is plugging this into a rigid body solver, which is doing the actual simulation and then it's adding some gravity onto it and outputting it so it is a good idea for me to do a quick mark just in this particular menu here in case we need to come back here so i'm going to hit uh, it'll be control and two or command and two if you're on a mac okay and then i can jump back up and then back over here and over here what it created was a rest node it then packs my geometry using an assemble and this is bringing back in the simulated geometry. This is a DOP import. So this is what's coming back from over in DOPS. So I'm just gonna hit Command and one here. So that means that if I hit one on my keyboard, it jumps to right here. If I hit two, it jumps over to my auto DOP network. So just one and two can pop over and back. Okay, so there are quick marks. Uh, so now I can hit play and I can see that my bottle just falls down to the ground. Okay, uh, I need to go and add a ground plane to stop the bottle from falling so i can go over to the collisions tab here and i can just click on ground plane and houdini is clever enough to know that i'm going to want the ground plane built into this um auto dot network and then if i jump into the auto dot network you can see that it has added that into the overall solve here okay so it puts it into a static solver so it's not going to move and now if i press play the bottle just falls apart at this point, I can go back and I can change around the cutter geometry and I can cut the bottle up in different ways and I can just press play here and it will just fall apart. So I technically have my simulation. Let's take a look at outputting it. So I'm going to jump back over to my uh, broken glass geometry object. And usually what we do in Houdini at the end of a chain uh, where we kind of have done a good deal of work is we put down a null. So I'm going to put down a null here just at the end. And I'm going to call this out fractured fractured ball. And I am using capital letters on purpose so that it appears at the top of a list when I need to pick things out. So what I want to do is I want to render out this geometry cache as an FBX. And I'm going to do that in the out context of Houdini, which is where the render nodes live. So I'm going to come up here. We're in the object level at the moment, and that's where our geometry uh, objects live our modeling context is I need to go over to the rendering context I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to other networks and I'm going to set this to out this brings me over to the rendering section if I hit tab now I get a different list so these are all render operators and I want to choose one of the side effects labs nodes so you will need to have side effects labs installed to get to one of these nodes side effects labs are a load of tools that are being developed that you can download and install with your version of Houdini. So you need to click this button here to install them. Okay, you will need to have that installed because we are looking for one of those tools and it is called the RBD to FBX render operator. This is the node that we need to point to our null that we created. So it's looking for node to export. So click the picker here and we can go and look in OBJ inside in broken glass. And you can see because we named it with capitals, out fractured bottle is up at the top here. So very easy to find. We can accept that. So this is what we're telling it to render out. This is where we're telling it to render out. It's going to look for where the hip file is saved. And then it's going to create an export folder with the hip name. And our hip name is up here at zero breaking bottles begin dot FBX. Okay, if I want to see the full path, I can middle mouse where it says export path and it will give me the full address, which is usually going to be very long, which is where these aliases become quite handy. 
uh, it is going to render out 128 frames now that's a little bit too long i want to keep this as lightweight as possible uh, for getting it into game engine so i'm going to shorten this down to 64 frames by 64 frames and i can go and hit render so that is it rendered out i'm going to now put a quick mark just in my out context it's going to be command and three in my case so i can come back here quickly if i need to i'm going to hit one and that's going to jump me back over to my geometry context i am going to pull back in the fbx we just rendered out and to do that i am going to use an fbx archive import which is one of the lab tools so i'm going to put this one down here and I'm going to go and point it to the dollar hip export folder that we just rendered out to. And it's this one just here. I'm going to load that one back in. I'm going to set my display flag to uh, look at this node. And I can press play and nothing happens. Now, nothing is happening because I haven't actually imported the animation. Uh, so I can click on import animation here. I need to hit reload geometry just to make sure it's come back in. And now if I press play, I am looking at the FBX that's been put out to disk. Okay, so there is definitely some animation on it. So what I need to do now is I need to go and open up Unity and I need to bring my FBX in to Unity and set it up so that my bottle is fracturing over on the Unity side. I've just gone and created a default universal render pipeline scene over in unity so there's nothing else happening in the scene it's just defaults i need to go and grab my fbx that we rendered out in houdini with our animation so i'm going to grab this guy and i'm just going to bring it in here get rid of this i'm just going to close this guy up for a second so here's my fbx now bringing in models from houdini they are too small by default so we need to scale them up by 100 to match Unity's scaling system. So I can click apply here. And I can go and just drag and drop my bottle into the scene. So I'm just gonna leave the bottle here on the table. What we need to do now is load in the animation from the FBX. Uh, so to do that, we are going to need the uh, animator window. So we can go to animation and open up the animator window here. We're going to need to add an animation controller so we can just go and create an animation controller here and we can rename that to uh, breaking ball just here like this and we are going to take our clip from our fbx which is uh, going to be this one just over here we can hit play on it just to make sure it's working yeah there is our fbx animation i'm just going to rename this to uh, breaking bottle just so i can find it very easily and i'm going to hit apply so here it is here here's our breaking bottle animation so i can just drop that into my animation controller there and then if i jump back over to my scene onto my uh, breaking bottle I can just add an animator and I can take my animation controller put that into my animator so now if I press play on my scene it should open up the game scene for me and with a bit of luck we should have some animation yay and our bottle is breaking apart I have just gone back into my um, bottle animation here and I've set loop time so it's going to play over and over. So that was a quick look at shattering a bottle over in Houdini in a way that we can art direct the shapes and then simulating it and bringing it back over to Unity. Now what I'd like to do in the next video is add some more controls so that I can get a bit more of an exciting simulation and we'd also like to look at different ways that we can optimize the simulation so that we have the least number of parts while retaining the best look for our breaking bottle.